lot of other positions that are becoming uh, much more strategic, I would say, in nature. Uh, there's also been some changes in the economy and the industry that are driving you know, new areas uh, for development. And uh, the whole digital transformation itself is, is driving uh, it, the technology that, that's driving behind it. You know, a lot of our roles are based on that now. Well, welcome to the latest edition of the Cranium Connection. I have with me today, Charles Shanley from Shanley Search Partners. Welcome. Hello, Sarah. Nice to see you. You as well. Tell us a little bit about your company. Sure. Uh, well, Shanley Search is, uh, I'm, well, I've been in the industry for 25 years and uh, we, we specialize in, in executive search, uh, HR consulting, uh, leadership development, but but uh, I've uh, been in the industry for quite some time, work for work for competitors, uh, built our own search practice, and then rebuilt it again. And so it's been a been a fun ride, and I uh, love working in the industry. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's great, and I love that you have that kind of experience, that de depth of experience um, that that Cranians need when they're looking for a partner uh, in finding, you know, the most important positions in their institution. Uh, so, what do you think are the top things that Cranians should look for when they're looking for a a really solid executive search firm? Sure. Well, I, I I think first off, you you want to make sure that they are specialists in the industry, you know, and that they they have experience working in the credit union industry. Uh, we definitely work. Uh, most of our business is in the industry. However, we also work banking. We also work fintech. But but primarily, I, th I would say ninety percent of our business is is within credit unions. But but uh, on, on top of that, you know, it depends on the position you're looking to fill. But you want to make sure that they have experience in that position. Uh, they want to. They also have experience working in your, you know, geographical area. You know, we have. Uh, I think we have 18 C-level positions open right now in the industry. I think eight of those are president and CEO roles. But uh, it's not just C-level. You know, we have roles that are manager. We have an ABBT, ABP IT, HR manager, and so VP level roles too. But but uh, but definitely want to make sure they have an understanding of the industry and and they have a uh, also a process in place. That uh, and and also have you know have experience you know checking word of mouth like asking your your competitors who they're using asking your friends who they're using and most of our business is word of mouth and and also uh, repeat business but uh, that's uh, what drives us but our process is pretty detailed and you want to make sure they have a detailed process that they're using we have strategic projects we make them do we have testing we do uh, financial analysis we go on site to help identify culture. And uh, and there, there's there's a lot that goes involved in that. So you want to make sure that uh, they have a good process in place and and who you're going to be working with. You know, we we have dedicated team that uh, works on spe specific positions. So you also want to know who that project manager is for that role. Yeah, yeah. One of the things actually you just said caught my attention. Segues into the next question I had for you is that. Credians seem to be using uh, search firms for not just the CEOs anymore. I think that a long, for a long time, that was the trend. Why do you think that is? What other trends are you kind of seeing in that uh, the usage of search firms within the credit union market? Sure. Yeah. And it's, it is a lot of CEO positions. I mean, a lot of that is really driven by retirement. And there it has been for the past 15, 20 years on the CEO side. And so that's why most of our positions are CEO searches. But you know, there are a lot of other positions that are becoming... Um, much more strategic, I would say, in nature. Uh, there's also been some changes in the economy and the industry that are driving you know, new areas uh, for development. And uh, the whole digital transformation itself is, is driving uh, it, the technology that, that's driving behind it. You know, a lot of our roles are based on that now. Uh, even uh, HR, I mean, it's, it's become much more of a strategic role. Uh, even uh, the CIO has become much more of a strategic role, especially with digital transformation. Even CFO, much more of a strategic role. So you're looking for leaders that are that have that uh, strategy side and innovation. And uh, a lot of times you don't have that internally. And so you know you're looking for you know larger larger organizations that are that have that innovation that have been down the road that you're about to go down. And so I think that is another big reason why we're it's been opening up quite a bit to other roles. And uh, just, uh, you know, it's also, you know, it's a candidate market. It's tough to find you know, excellent candidates these days. And and so, and that's what, you know, we are specialists in that. And so, our, you know, obviously executive search firms, that's what we do. And so we have uh, 90,000 people in our candidate pool. And so uh, it's a little easier for us to find those people than you can do on your own. 
Yeah, I've cer certainly heard that uh, finding a CIO might even take longer and be more difficult than finding a CEO anymore. <laughs> it, it can be. I mean, there are, everybody seems to be going through a core conversion today. Uh, I think half <laughs> our clients right now, for whatever position it is, they're going through a core conversion, and and that is driven to you know a lot of times they're looking at core and, and not they're not able to provide uh, the you know the. Uh, the, you know, the core that they need to to drive that innovation, and so you see a lot of core, you know, a lot of core conversions, and you see uh, the CIO role, role really, really changing. Even CIOs are more recognized now uh, for moving into the to a CEO role, and so mm -hmm. it's a little harder to sell to the board, but but we do see that transition. Yeah, I was going to uh, tie back to that uh, what you had said earlier too about not having the internal candidates. Um, what, do you have any suggestions for cranes and uh, how they might want to build career paths to that CEO spot too? Uh, absolutely. I mean, they should, you know, everybody talks about succession planning and it's it's uh, 20 years ago, they, they talked about it and they didn't really have a plan. And today they talk about it and they really don't have a plan still. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, but it has been, like I mentioned on the HR side, you know, the whole leadership development and organizational development side of HR has really increased and you really should have succession planning. But you also want you know want to identify your leaders and and who have who have an aspiration or have aspirations to you know to grow in, in their career and identify those folks and and make sure they have the necessary training uh, that they they need to move into those roles. But you know it, at the end of the day, uh, internal candidates, if if all things are equal, they should get the role. You should promote from within. Those are the things you should be doing and 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 promoting morale. But you don't sometimes you just don't know until you go through a process if all things are equal and you need that process to go through it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, there are things you could do to help prepare yourself to, to be a better leader. Uh, you know, we recommend if, you know, if you haven't got, uh, gone through advanced ed education and received that master's degree, or, you know, you should be doing other things. Maybe it's uh, going through the QCEO Institute. We recommend that. It's a great program to go through. Uh, Cardwell Leadership, another great program to go through. So preparing yourself, if mm -hmm. even if there isn't succession planning, preparing yourself on your own, to for that next level is important. Absolutely. And so um, I want to switch over a little bit to compensation and benefits package packages. What do you see evolving there? What are the trends happening there? What are what are executives asking for maybe beyond the salary? Yeah, well, salary is a part of it, you know, and there's a, it's as I mentioned, it's a candidate market. So you know they're asking for higher salaries. And so you got to make sure that your your range is are, are competitive and and they're looking around and uh, and you know, on top of that you know we've uh, you know there, there have always been SERPs really for for CEOs and SERPs meaning um, supplemental executive retirement plans there's you know the used to be the 457F it's been more of a transition to uh, the split dollar insurance plan uh, the past few years and uh, and that that has always you know been that way for the past 10 15 years at least for 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 CEO placement but you know what's what's becoming much more prevalent is is having SERPs for C level and mm -hmm. all, all, all your entire C team, you know, and uh, and so it's uh, you know we have a search right now where it's a CFO search and one of the candidates has a SERP and so they've got you know vested retirement and they've, they've been there and they were part of that SERP already and so uh, our clients trying to hire them and they're having a difficult time because they don't offer a SERP and mm -hmm. so you know it's it's named the golden handcuff for a reason you know it, <laughs> it does it does hold you there and. And uh, and so those are, that is much more common today than we've seen even five years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, on top of that, on um, compensation, you know, some of the you know, if you haven't had bonus structures are definitely you know more more prevalent, and even the the bonuses are are increased more these years than they have been. You know, we've seen some CEO compensation bonuses up to forty five percent. That's pretty high, but but uh, it occurs. You know, uh, pay for performance. But uh, even but even the structures of those bonuses has changed we have seen over the years you know it uh, has always been you know primarily i'd say financial metrics you know your roa or or capital ratios and but uh, that is changing or the components of the bonus uh, balance scorecard are changing to you know even uh, adding a member experience to that you know mm -hmm. mps score ratings you know uh, you know mps is uh has been around but but uh, we see most credit unions falling in between the I'd say 50 50% 50 or higher uh, range for NPS and they're tying for bonus performance into into an NPS score. Mm -hmm. uh, I think anything over 20% is probably uh, favorable but but uh, we have one client that's 90% plus an NPS score. And, and so it's your and those are your walking billboards for your membership and uh, and so uh, those types of components of bonus structures are changing. 
Yeah, I, that's really interesting that the focus is so much on member satisfaction, you know, uh, which is good. It's good to hear. <laughs> I was just kind of surprised. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And that's those are your biggest proponents for uh, for you know biggest people that are gonna the word of mouth once again is getting a, getting the word out. How do you get more members and the, is that satisfaction? And and it's really that has been you know one of the core core values of credit unions is is having that that culture, but having that you know strong member experience and and the service levels, and that's really been where where they've been beating out the banks and. And so, uh, but, you know, we are starting to see some chinks in that a little bit. There are some, uh, some cultures uh, that are getting somewhat diminished uh, because of the economy and the way things are structured. You know, uh, you know, creating culture used to be the big selling point, but, but, uh, you know, obviously, you know, we've got a lot of remote work, a lot of hybrid going on. And, and we've, you know, we've seen diminished cultures because of those environments. You know, we have, um, we've, you know, there's even the sea level, uh, we've seen a lot moving to hybrid or remote. Uh, we have one client that is, is has a great success story behind them. They their whole their whole C level team is remote across the nation, and mm -hmm. for them they're a very they're a very progressive credit union and they're doing a great job at it. But there's others you know that that are are not that way that are they used to be uh, you know they had changed to a hybrid environment and they're not coming back to on site for C level or even upper level management, and it's hurting those cultures. Uh, it is you know uh, we're assessing those cultures when we're going on site. And you know the board thinks they're great, but all of a sudden, when you start digging around and spend a couple of days on site, you know it's because of the team atmosphere. Uh, it, it's lacking. It's um, it's become it's it's uh, you don't just feel that you know that uh, the team atmosphere as much, and that slips down, and that's part of culture, and then that slips down to your member experience level. So it's uh, it's becoming an issue. Uh, we've seen it earlier in the year, but I would say even more so now as we're not bringing some of those folks back, but. Mm -hmm. It's also a challenge, you know, to, you know, you have to have some hybrid too for some of those positions because they're not coming back when you mm -hmm. uh, look at uh, some of the, the back office functions, which makes a lot of sense you know, mm -hmm. to be hybrid remote or even some of the IT functions, but just be careful uh, when you're, when you're doing upper level management uh, in those environments, because it, uh, it's slipping. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, because I've, I've worked remotely almost my entire career, uh, which is more than a couple of decades now. But um, even when I uh, worked elsewhere and um, yeah, I, I think you have to really try, you have to really have a plan and try to keep that culture going or maybe the culture does change, uh, but it's not necessarily a bad change either. Um, balance, definitely a balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So um, you all recently put out a white paper uh, too. And one of the things that really caught my attention is that um I don't know if you were saying that uh, outsiders are a little more accepted now, or should be more a little a little more accepted now by the credit union movement. Um, I feel like for quite a while there, there was the credit unions felt they had this secret sauce that nobody could possibly come in and and uh, fit in uh, or have that culture. Uh, but uh, what are you what are you seeing now? Are they more accepting, looking more for outsiders, and how's that working out? I think they have to be, you know, especially when you're going to some lower level positions and and actually some upper levels, very specific positions. And because you know, you're because you're running out of talent when there's not a lot of talent out there, you have to just open it up to other ideas. And 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 so there's a lot of areas that are transferable. When you start when you start talking about IT, there's a lot industry it doesn't matter as much on industry. You can those those skills are are transferable. When you start looking at when marketing, uh, we almost we we actually ask our clients to be very open to outside industry when we're doing a marketing search, because you know it's do you want the same cookie cutter uh, marketing approach? And so when you have some outside industry experience bringing those fresh ideas and fresh perspectives, you're going to have a great marketing program. So uh, and and so those are some HR is very very transferable. Mm -hmm. And so those areas we definitely want to see them opening it up. But uh, you got to do what you got to do in today's market. And so mm -hmm. going outside industry. And looking at you know outside even banking and and even at fintech and and beyond that uh, it's gonna it's gonna help and mm -hmm. uh, you know as long as they have the cultural fit and, right. and a lot of those other areas are teachable too. Yeah, no, and that that's you know I, I agree a hundred percent with the you need to understand the not for profit culture like you know and that service culture where the money follows the member service not the other and not necessarily the other way around. <laughs> very true. Very true. And that's where some of our bankers fail you know, yeah. on the culture side. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, definitely seen that. Uh, so right now, you know, whether it's looking for 
talent, looking for outsiders inside internal. What are some of the other challenges that Ukrainians are facing right now in terms of exec executive recruitment? And you already talked a little bit about retention as well, or fighting against those who are trying to retain their good executives. Yeah, and I, you know, I think I covered the bigger areas of that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, for retention. It's you know, if if you don't have you know the ranges that are that are proper, uh, your your candidates, the, your internal folks will start to look around. Mm -hmm. If you're not if you're not offering upward mobility and promotional opportunities, they're going to start looking around. And so it also ties into your succession planning, you know, promoting morale and having those plans in place. And and so those are some of the bigger issues. And, and people are leaving uh, for advancement. And, and that's why all these most of these positions are open, either mm -hmm. from retirement or because they're leaving for other opportunities. And mm -hmm. so if you don't have uh, the ranges in place, you make sure you have accurate survey data, make sure you're using the right surveys. You know, there, there are some surveys that are, that are not accurate and you got to take into, you know, cost of living adjustments and, and, uh, and uh, real market, you know, real market comp. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so if those are at a range, uh, you're, you're going to know it and they're going to know it and they're going to look around. And so you got to, you got to, you know, especially in today's market, whatever you can, can do to retain those employees, it's, it's critical. And it, and it starts from the top and it starts yeah. from the board. You know, you got to, you got to have the right policies in place. You got to really, truly embrace succession planning. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's always in a strategic plan and it's, you know, it's all always also one of the reasons why you have a camel rating, uh, is, and, but, uh, how often it's really detailed is, is, uh, right. it's very, it's very, very rare. And, or, and actually executing on the strategic and plan. Executing yes. on it. Yeah. 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 And look, you know, and it's looking, you know, it's also, you know, looking at who you are today as a credit union and who you want to be down the road. And do you have the talent? that will be there that you the necessary talent for down the road and so if you don't and you may not you got to start building that talent from within you know for for the future not for now and and so you got to offer you know advancement opportunities you got to offer you know paying for for advancements in in education uh, mm -hmm. sending them to conferences so you know uh, you know lending has always been an area because of of uh, concern because they just they stop formal credit training programs and so that's why the CLO search has always been tough for 20 years. And, and it's because, because there hasn't been mentorship in that whole area. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of it has to do with, you know, the entry of commercial lending too, but you just don't have the talent internally. And so you have to go outside for that oftentimes to the banking side, but, but it's being, being proactive and, and knowing about those things and doing, and taking the necessary steps you can. So you, you, you know, you're prepared for that. Yeah. And are the boards, keeping up are they prepared for how compensation packages are changing the the dollar amounts of the salaries the the technology and the um other i mean even if you're not at the cio the ceo needs a certain understanding of you know what kind of digital transformation that particular credit union needs are the boards keeping up with with having the oversight and the the governance strength necessary uh, sometimes, and, and uh, I would say sometimes they are, sometimes they're not, and they're and they're really out of touch with it. Uh, and so it is, it is constantly. I mean, there's key marks when you when you hit a billion in assets. I mean, things change, ranges change, and so as you grow, you have to be competitive and com and continue to change your compensation ranges. But you know, there uh, and, and yeah, the digital side, and there's a lot of boards that are out of touch, but there are some progressive boards too. You make sure you have a diverse board, a progressive board, mm -hmm. and that you're you're putting the right people on that board. And, and uh, do you have term limits? Yeah, it's it's a you know, it's a double-edged kind of sword. Definitely it's touchy. A, it's a, yeah, it's a it's a testy question. But but I mean, are are they aging to the point where they're not contributing on the board of directors? Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, you got to you know rethink rethink your board governance. And but you know also the board members need to attend conferences. That they need to be aware you know, mm -hmm. at, of what's going on in the industry. And and so does your your CEO. I mean. You know, there's there's a balance to industry involvement in conferences. I mean, you also have to be there and be present to be a CEO. But uh, you know, in general, there are some uh, key competencies we look for in almost any position, and uh, and especially at the CEO level. And we're almost always the same, but those are changing. Mm. You know, it, uh, you know, cultural fit still number one. You know, and and uh, you know, then vision behind that. You know, of, of the future, uh, and then that, that strategic direction of how you get to that vision. And then uh, obviously uh, community involvement is very important, not just for C level, I mean, not just for CEO, but for all for all levels of C level. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then on top of that, you know, there's some newer newer ones of adaptability is becoming more important with the changing economy and, and changing regulations. And so you have to be be able to adapt. You know, DEI, emotional intelligence, it's a whole mm -hmm. other category. It's become much more important 
for leaders today. So it's uh, and so it's uh, the competencies tend to change a little bit as you're moving along, but the, some of the core ones are always there. And so you have to uh, we're looking we're looking for all those competencies in any right. position. You know, and and so if um, so it's uh, yeah. And so it's a lot of the same discussions we have with boards and we help build, you know, CEO profiles for them. A lot of them haven't gone through the steps. If they have a transition that's coming for a CEO retiring or someone else, but they're not prepared for that. And so they need to be prepared for that. And uh, so you need to start working on building a CEO profile. Uh, what are you looking for? And, um, and a lot of times they're not ready for that, but that's, you know, that's part of what would they hire us for? We help build right. those, those CEO profiles if they don't have that in place and, and it could all be done. Yeah. So, any last words, any words of wisdom you would share with uh, the credit union, with credit union land? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about uh, working in this history, industry, and that's why we love it so much. And I think that's why we do spend so much time in it. Uh, and uh, we love the people uh, that we work with and the boards we work with, uh, the managers we work with, the candidates. It's, uh, you know, there's a, there's a warm and fuzziness to it. And, uh, you know, people really care about each other and they care about their employees and they care about their members. And, and uh, just don't forget about, you know, our mission. And uh, that what it's all about, and uh, definitely don't lose that touch. Yeah. And but, uh, no, that's uh, that's what I would close out. But in hiring a firm, you know, make sure you you take the time to do the due diligence. You know, uh, make sure they they have those positions they're working on that you're needing, and and they have that experience. And and ask around. You know, see what other what uh, other other credit users who they're who they're using. But mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's an awesome industry to work in. It is. It, it just sucks you in. I can't leave. <laughs> for sure. Well, thank you very much for your time, Charles. I appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay. All righty.